Ottonian art is a style in pre-Romanesque German art, covering also some works from the Low Countries, Northern Italy and Eastern France. It was named by the art historian Hubert Janicek after the Ottonian dynasty which ruled Germany and Northern Italy between 919 and 1024 under the kings Henry I. Otto I, Otto II, Otto III and Henry II. With Ottonian architecture, it is a key component of the Ottonian Renaissance. However, the style neither began nor ended to neatly coincide with the rule of the dynasty. It emerged some decades into their rule and persisted past the Ottonian emperors into the reigns of the early Salian dynasty which lacks an artistic style label of its own. In the traditional scheme of art to history, Ottonian art follows Carolingian art and precedes Romanesque art, though the transitions at both ends of the period are gradual rather than sudden. Like the former and unlike the latter, it was very largely a style restricted to a few of the small cities of the period and important monasteries as well as the court circles of the emperor and his leading vassals. After the decline of the Carolingian Empire, the Holy Roman Empire was re-established under the Saxon Ottonian dynasty. From this emerged a renewed faith in the idea of empire and a reformed church creating a period of heightened cultural and artistic fervor. It was in this atmosphere that masterpieces were created that fused the traditions from which Ottonian artists derived their inspiration. Models of late antique, Carolingian and Byzantine origin Surviving Ottonian art is very largely religious, in the form of illuminated manuscripts and metalwork, and was produced in a small number of centers for a narrow range of patrons in the circle of the imperial court, as well as important figures in the church. However much of it was designed for display to a wider public, especially of pilgrims. The style is generally grand and heavy, sometimes to excess, and initially less sophisticated than the Carolingian equivalents, with less direct influence from Byzantine art and less understanding of its classical models. But around 1000 a striking intensity and expressiveness emerge in many works, as a solemn monumentality is combined with the vibrant inwardness, an unworldly, visionary quality with sharp attention to actuality surface patterns of flowing lines and rich bright colors with passionate emotionalism. Context Following late Carolingian styles, presentation portraits of the patrons of manuscripts are very prominent in Ottonian art, and much Ottonian art reflected the dynasty's desire to establish visually a link to the Christian rulers of late antiquity, such as Constantine, Theodoric, and Justinian as well as to their Carolingian predecessors, particularly Charlemagne. This goal was accomplished in various ways. For example, the many Ottonian ruler portraits typically include elements, such as province personifications, or representatives of the military and the church flanking the emperor, with a lengthy imperial iconographical history, as well as the reuse of motifs from older imperial art, the removal of spolia from late antique structures in Roman Ravenna and their incorporation into Ottonian buildings was a device intended to suggest imperial continuity. This was clearly the intention of Otto I when he removed columns, some of porphyry, and other building materials from the palace of Theodoric in Ravenna and reused them in his new cathedral at Magdeburg. The one thing the ruler portraits rarely attempt is a close likeness of the individual features of a ruler when Otto III died. Some manuscript images of him were repurposed as portraits of Henry II without the need being felt to change the features, in a continuation and intensification of late Carolingian trends. Many miniatures contain miniatures depicting the donors of the manuscripts to a church, including bishops, abbots and abbesses, and also the emperor. In some cases successive miniatures show a kind of relay. In the Hornback Sacramentary the scribe presents the book to his abbot, who presents it to St. Perman, founder of Hornbach Abbey, who presents it to St. Peter, who presents it to Christ. 
altogether taking up eight pages to stress the unity and importance of the command structure binding church and state, on earth and in heaven. Byzantine art also remained an influence, especially with the marriage of the Greek princess Theophanu to Otto II, and imported Byzantine elements, especially enamels and ivories, are often incorporated into Ottonian metalwork such as book covers. However, if there were actual Greek artists working in Germany in the period, they have left less trace than their predecessors in Carolingian times. The manuscripts were both scribed and illuminated by monks with specialized skills, some of whose names are preserved. But there is no evidence as to the artists who worked in metal, enamel and ivory, who are usually assumed to have been laymen. Though there were some monastic goldsmiths in the early medieval period, and some lay brothers and lay assistants employed by monasteries, while secular jewellery supplied a steady stream of work for goldsmiths, ivory carving at this period was mainly for the church, and may have been centred in monasteries, although wall paintings seems to have been usually done by laymen. Otto II, by the Gregory Master, Apotheosis of Otto III, Lou the Gospels, Henry II being crowned by Christ, from the sacramentary of Henry II. Otto III or Henry II crowned by Saints, Bamberg Apocalypse, Manuscripts, Ottonian monasteries produced most if not all of the most magnificent medieval illuminated manuscripts. They were a major art form of the time, and monasteries received direct sponsorship from emperors and bishops. Having the best in equipment and talent available, the range of heavily illuminated texts was very largely restricted to the main liturgical books, with very few secular works being so treated. In contrast to manuscripts of other periods, it is very often possible to say with certainty who commissioned or received a manuscript but not where it was made. Some manuscripts also include relatively extensive cycles of narrative art, such as the 16 pages of the Codex Aureus of Ectonash devoted to strips in three tiers with scenes from the life of Christ and his parables. Heavily illuminated manuscripts were given rich treasure bindings and their pages were probably seen by very few when they were carried in the grand processions of Ottonian churches it seems to have been with the book closed to display the cover. The Ottonian style did not produce surviving manuscripts from before about the 960s when books known as the Eben and Group were made, perhaps at Lorsch, as several miniatures in the Gero Codex, the earliest and grandest of the group, copy those in the Carolingian Lorsch Gospels. This is the first stylistic group of the traditional Reichenau school. The two other major manuscripts of the group are the sacramentaries named for Hornbach in Petershausen. In the group of four presentation miniatures in the former described above, we can almost follow the movement away from the expansive Carolingian idiom to the more sharply defined Ottonian one. A number of important manuscripts produced from this period onwards in a distinctive group of styles are usually attributed to the scriptorium of the island monastery of Reichenau in Lake Constance. Despite an admitted lack of evidence connecting them to the monastery there, C.R. Dodwell was one of a number of dissident voices here, believing the works to have been produced at Losch and Trier instead. Wherever it was located, the Reichenau school specialized in gospel books and other liturgical books, many of them, such as the Munich Gospels of Otto III and the Pericopes of Henry II, imperial commissions. Due to their exceptional quality, the manuscripts of Reichenau were in 2003 added to the UNESCO Memory of the World International Register. The most important Reichenau school manuscripts are agreed to fall into three distinct groups, all named after scribes whose names are recorded in their books. The Eben and group covered above was followed by the Ruid Precht group, named after the scribe of the Egbert Psalter. Dodwell assigns this group to Trier. The Archon Gospels of Otto III, also known as the Luther Gospels, give their name to the third Luther group of manuscripts, most from the 11th century, in a strongly contrasting style, though still attributed by most scholars to Reichenau, but by Dodwell also to Trier.
The outstanding miniaturist of the Ruid Precht group was the so-called Master of the Registrum Gregory, or Gregory Master, whose work looked back in some respects to late antique manuscript painting, and whose miniatures are notable for their delicate sensibility to tonal grades and harmonies, their fine sense of compositional rhythms their feelings for the relationship of figures in space, and above all their special touch of reticence and poise. He worked chiefly in Trier in the 970s and 980s, and was responsible for several miniatures in the influential Codex Egberti, a gospel lectionary made for Archbishop Egbert of Trier, probably in the 980s. However, the majority of the 51 images in this book, which represent the first extensive cycle of images depicting the events of Christ's life in a Western European manuscript, were made by two monks from Reichenau, who are named and depicted in one of the miniatures. The style of the Luther group is very different, and departs further from rather than returning to classical traditions, it carried transcendentalism to an extreme, with marked schematization of the forms and colors, flattened form, conceptualized draperies and expansive gesture. Backgrounds are often composed of bands of color with a symbolic rather than naturalistic rationale, the size of figures reflects their importance and in him, emphasis is not so much on movement as in gesture and glance, with narrative scenes presented as a quasi-liturgical act. Dialogues of Divinity This gestural, dumb show was soon to be conventionalized as a visual language throughout medieval Europe. The group were produced perhaps from the 990s to 1015 or later, and major manuscripts include the Munich Gospels of Otto III, the Bamberg Apocalypse and a volume of biblical commentary there, and the Pericopes of Henry II, the best known and most extreme of the group, where the figure style has become more monumental, more rarefied and sublime, at the same time thin in density, insubstantial, mere silhouettes of color against a shimmering void. The group introduced the background of solid gold to Western illumination. Two dedication miniatures added to the Egmond Gospels around 975 show a less accomplished Netherlandish version of Ottonian style. In Regensburg Street, Emmeram's Abbey held the major Carolingian Codex Aureus of St. Emmeram, which probably influenced a style with an incisive line and highly formal organization of the page, giving in the Uta Codex of C. 1020 complex schemes where bands of gold outline the bold, squares, circles, ellipses, and rhomb that enclose the figures, and inscriptions are incorporated in the design explicating its complex theological symbolism. This style was to be very influential on Romanesque art in several media. Ectonash Abbey became important under Abbot Humbert, in office from 1028 to 1051, and the pages of the Codex Aureus of Ectonash were produced there, followed by the Golden Gospels of Henry III in 1045-46, which Henry presented to Spire Cathedral, the major work of the school. Henry also commissioned the Uppsala Gospels for the cathedral there. Other important monastic scriptoria that flourished during the Ottonian age include those at Salzburg, Hildesheim, Corvey, Fulda, and Cologne, where the Hit Day Codex was made. Gallery of Christ Calming the Storm This scene was often included in Ottonian cycles of the life of Christ. Many show Jesus twice, once asleep and once calming the storm. Codex Egberti, between 977 and 993, wall painting at Oberzell, 1000, Munich Gospels of Otto III, below, the exorcism of the Gadarene swine, Hitday Codex, Cologne, after 1000, metalwork and enamels, objects for decorating churches such as crosses, reliquaries, altar frontals and treasure bindings for books were all made of or covered by gold, embellished with gems, enamels, crystals, and cameos. This was a much older style, but the Ottonian version has distinctive features, with very bizarre decoration of surfaces. 
often gems raised up from the main surface on little gold towers, accompanied by beehive projections in gold wire, and figurative reliefs in repoussé gold decorating areas between the bars of enamel and gem decoration. Relics were assuming increasing importance, sometimes political, in this period, and so increasingly rich reliquaries were made to hold them. In such works the gems do not merely create an impression of richness, but serve both to offer a foretaste of the bedgeworld nature of the celestial city, and particular types of gem were believed to have actual powerful properties in various scientific, medical and magical respects. As set out in the popular lapidary books, the few surviving pieces of secular jewellery are in similar styles, including the crown worn by Otto III as a child, which he presented to the Golden Madonna of Essen after he outgrew it. Examples of crux gemeter or processional crosses include an outstanding group in the Essen Cathedral treasury, several abbesses of Essen Abbey were Ottonian princesses. The Cross of Otto and Matilda, Cross of Matilda and the Essen Cross with large enamels were probably all given by Matilda, Abbess of Essen, and a fourth cross, the Theophanew Cross came some 50 years later. The Cross of Lothair and Imperial Cross were imperial possessions, Vienna also has the imperial crown of the Holy Roman Empire. The book cover of the Codex Aureus of Ector Nash is in a very comparable style. Other major objects include the reliquary of St. Andrew surmounted by a foot in Trier, and gold altar frontals for the Palace Chapel, Arkin and Basel Cathedral. The Palace Chapel also has the pulpit or ambon of Henry II, the late Carolingian upper cover of the Lindau Gospels and the Arnulf Saborium in Munich were important forerunners of the style. From a few decades before and probably from the same workshop, large objects in non-precious metals were also made, with the earliest surviving wheel chandeliers from the end of the period a huge candelabra in Essen, and in particular a spectacular collection of ambitious large bronze works, and smaller silver ones, at Hildesheim Cathedral from the period of Bishop Bernward, who was himself an artist, although his biographer was unusually honest in saying that he did not reach the peaks of perfection. The most famous of these is the pair of church doors, the Burnwood doors, with biblical figure scenes in bronze relief, each cast in a single piece, where the powerfully simple compositions convey their meanings by emphatic gestures, in a way comparable to the Reichenau miniatures of the same period. There is also a bronze column and then the Burnwood column, over 12 feet high, originally the base for a crucifix, cast in a single hollow piece. This unusual form is decorated with 24 scenes from the ministry of Jesus in a continuous strip winding round the column in the manner of Trajan's column and other Roman examples. Around 980, Archbishop Egbert of Trier seems to have established the major Ottonian workshop producing cloisons on a enamel in Germany, which is thought to have fulfilled orders for other centers, and after his death in 993 possibly moved to Essen. During this period the workshop followed Byzantine developments by using the Sengschmelz or sunk enamel technique in addition to the Walschmelz one already used. Small plaques with decorative motifs derived from plant forms continued to use Walschmelz, with enamel all over the plaque, while figures were now usually in Sengschmelz, surrounded by a plain gold surface into which the outline of the figure had been recessed. The Essen cross with large enamels illustrated above shows both these techniques. Gallery of Bronze is Abbess Matilde's Candelabram in Essen Cathedral, 1000. Expulsion of Adam and Eve from Bernward Doors at Hildesheim Cathedral. Bernward's Doors at Hildesheim Cathedral, 1015. The Bronze Bernward Column at Hildesheim. 